lower limbs. So the lower limbs are divided into three sections, just like the upper limbs are divided into the arm, the forearm, and the hand. The lower limb is divided into your thigh, the leg, and the foot. So between the hip joint, remember, and the knee, this is your thigh or the femoral region. Between the knee joint and your ankle, that's your leg. Usually we just call it leg because you have anteriorly, crudal, posteriorly, sural, and laterally fibular regions. So it's easier just to call it the leg. And then the foot. We still have the 30 bones to describe, just like in the upper limb. The thing is, in here we have a different rearrangement of bones. We still have one bone on the femoral region, just like we have one bone on the arm, the humerus. On the leg, we have two bones, the tibia medially and the fibula laterally, just like like on the forearm, we have radius and ulna. The thing is that on the knee, we have one bone, the kneecap, the patella, that we don't have here in the elbows. But good news, good news. Instead of having eight carpal bones in the foot, we have just seven tarsal bones. So we end up having the same number of bones in the upper and lower limbs. Now, <clears throat> functions of your lower limbs is just to transmit your body weight, to keep balance. So the body weight is received by our pelvis and is transmitted down to both your, uh, the bones of your thigh, which are the femurs, and from there to the tibia, which is the thickest bone on your legs, and from there to the talus, which is one of the, the tarsal bones. That's the direction how the body weight is transmitted. So to keep uh, the, the balance and equilibrium, the alignment of these bones are very important. So let's see the, the femur. See that the femur is not vertically placed on our thighs. It runs from lateral to medial, superior to inferior, something like this. So, because, why, why, why? Because remember, the acetabulum faces laterally. So the, the femur uh, is located uh, on a diagonal on your, like this, on your thigh. This is important because, well, it runs medially, so we can have the knees placed on the midline Again, for a better, better uh, balanced and uh, balance and equilibrium of your body, we can we can in this way keep the the center of gravity in the or towards the midline. But there is another thing that, given this position, it makes very vulnerable the neck of the femur. Is this portion in here? It that uh, it makes it weak. It's the weakest area of this bone, even though this is the strongest and longest bone of the body. This is the weakest area of this bone. Most of the fractures of the femur happened uh, on the neck of the femur. <clears throat> and they're so-called hip fractures. It's not the hip bone that is fractured, it's just the neck of the femur. Now, <clears throat> fractures. The femur, let's review the landmarks required uh, by this class. First of all, we have a head, don't you? We have a round head and that is supported by the neck. Totally different, look at the head of the femur with the neck, it's an elegant bone when you compare to the humerus. It's like that, it has no neck. I mean, he has it, but it's short. So this is the head of the humerus. This is the head of the femur. Neck of the humerus almost fused with the diaphysis. In here is separated from the diaphysis of the bone. 
<clears throat> then we have, remember that in the humorous we described the greater and lesser tubercles. Please don't get confused. In here we have also two bumps, two big projections, one bigger than the other one. But in here we're going to call it trochanter. Why? I don't know. <clears throat> so we have the greater trochanter. See how big it is when we compare it to the lesser trochanter. Greater trochanter is facing laterally and you can actually touch it on uh, right below your, um, your hip joint. The lesser trochanter cannot be touched and it points medially. See, this is medial this side because it, in here is the head of the humerus, um, the head of the femur, which we know that it points towards your body medially. So whatever we describe on the same side of the head of the femur is medial, contralaterally is lateral. So the lesser trochanter is located medially and posteriorly. This is an anterior view, this is a posterior view. What else are we going to describe? Let's go to the distal end of the bone. Look, this is the anterior view, the one that you are seeing in your image, this one. And when I turn it, it looks like that. And this is your posterior view. And you can see, of course, these two round um, articulating surfaces. How do we call that? Condyles. And we have two a medial condyle and a lateral condyle. So which one is medial? Of course, the one on the same side of the, uh, the head of the femur, and the other one is the lateral. <clears throat> medial and lateral condyle. What is this for? Well, they're going to articulate with the tibia to form the knee joint. That we'll describe later. Now, where do you expect to find and I hope you have already watched the video lectures uh, from chapter 9 from joints. So you are familiar right now with the movement. Adduction, remember, is closing of the legs. Where do you expect to find the adductor tubercle? It's a tubercle, or, or, which is a bump, that, uh, where the adductor muscles attach. A doctor, so closing of the legs. Are you going to close it medially? So it is located in the medial right superior to the medial condyle. We have this little tip in here. That's the adductor tubercle. We are going to use it to describe the adductor muscles. What else do we have in here? Okay, anteriorly, look this smooth surface in here. This is the patellar surface that serves as an articulating surface to receive the patella, which is your kneecap, to form the femoral patellar uh, articulation. Uh, posteriorly, I'm going to turn it. So in between the two condyles, you have this deep fossa, which is the intercondylar, in between two condyl condyles, intercondylar fossa. Okay, fossa is just a depression. <clears throat> so that's the landmarks that we need to know in the proximal and in the, in the distal end. Now let's see what we have to describe on the shaft. And the only landmarks required by this course are all located on the posterior view, on the posterior side of the bone. And we're going to start describing the linea aspera. But let me show you here. This is only the posterior view of the bone. And you know it's a posterior view because the condyles are looking at you. If they don't look at you, you can see the patellar surface, that's anterior. The condyles are looking at you, posterior. So, see, right in the midline, we have a ridge, literally. It's just a ridge. You cannot even, I don't think you can see it in there. Let's see, in there, this ridge in here, that ridge is called the linea aspera. 
that rich. Now, look, you know, trying to find these two lines. Can you see one line in here and one line in here? This is medially located, that's the pectineal line. And laterally located, see, another line, that's the gluteal tuberosity. Now, what's going on in here? Why do I want you to know these terms? <clears throat> on the pectineal line attaches the pectineal muscle that we're going to describe next module. And the gluteal tuberosity attaches the, it was the deltoid, the biceps, the gluteal muscles. So let's, I just want to take a few minutes in here to make sense of all of this. We described so far the, this is the posterior view again, ischium condyles. So this is the posterior view. And we said that this lateral surface is called the gluteal surface, what the gluteal muscles attach. What do you think this muscle can perform, which movement can perform if it goes from here, originates right here in the gluteal surface of the ilium and ends right here laterally in this lateral line on the femur, the gluteal uh, tuberosity. So it's crossing the hip joint posteriorly and attaches laterally. So what do you think it can, it can perform? If I contract this muscle, if I shorten this muscle, I perform this movement. How do you call this movement? When you move the limb away from your, the midline, that's abduction or abduction. This is how we are going to integrate all of these concepts. I put this in here. Well, let me finish this here, this first. Down inferior to the linea aspera, we have two more lines. Can you see them in here? One and two. One is medial, one is lateral. This is the medial supracondylar line. It's medial because it's on the same side of the head of the femur. And the other one is the lateral, the lateral supracondylar line. In there, muscles that move your leg originate at. So <clears throat> let me see, let me see, let me see if I can do this. <clears throat> Always having trouble with this. So gluteal muscle, starting here and crosses the hip joint and then inserts or attaches again right here. See? So when you contract this muscle, when you shorten this muscle, you can... Ooh, you can contract it in this way. You move this end or you pull this bone, you bring the femur laterally, like opening your legs. What will you do with a muscle? Let's put the muscle now in here that begins, let's say, in somewhere here in the pubic bone and ends in the pectineal line, which is about here, right? So what will you do with the muscle in this uh, location? When you contract that muscle, you shorten that muscle, you're going to pull, right? Ah, these, let's see, black. I just want a pen. We're going to pull the femur now towards this direction. That's what the pectineal muscle do. It's an adductor muscle. It closes your leg. What if, if I have a, one more, a muscle that, okay, that originates here in the ischial tuberosity Actually, there are several in there, and it goes to attach right here on the linea aspera. So, posterior view from the ischial tuberosity to the 
like this to the um, linea aspera. When you contract it, you pull the muscle and you move it posteriorly. How do you call that movement? Extension of the leg. So that's why we are learning and describing all of these crazy bony landmarks. This is why it's important to learn it. So see you in the next video. We are going to discuss the coxofemoral articulation, I think it is. See ya.